It's the early aughts, and there's a remake of a classic genre film coming out to theaters. And despite not intending this, the technology in it is something straight out of science fiction. This week, we're talking about 2003's The Italian Job. How Star Wars is it? Well, hello there, my... Good morning! <laughs> Good morning, Hi, Josiah, ladies. and hi, listeners. And I'm Mike, hello. and that's Josiah. And this is and How Josiah, Star Wars Is It? And I'm Mike. That's right. And I'm Josiah. <laughs> and this is How Star Wars Is It? Which is the only podcast yes. where we rate and review things on a scale of 1 to 10 not of how good or bad they are but of how star wars they are right imagine everything that has star wars in the title you know movies tv shows books comics yep. all that video games put it all into a pot and you boil all of that stuff together you boil it down into a star wars chili and that is a mm. 10 out of 10 on our scale and we are comparing things to that perfect 10 chili and uh That's right. you know you already said it it's the only podcast and if you were to ask the mike of say 2003 2004 um what movies he liked he would say there's only one movie and it's the italian job <laughs> <laughs> there's yeah the uh, useless question yeah. there's only one it's the italian job it's the best now i watched this for the first time. Oh gosh, for this I'm show. so excited to hear your takes. I also it feels almost like I watched it for the first time fairly recently because uh I've become an adult and seen so many other movies, so many better movies. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Especially yeah. even like I think I had probably seen Ocean's Eleven around the time that I saw Italian Job for the first time, but like Italian Job is just like so fourteen year old. Versus Ocean's yeah. Eleven is like a, a really dynamic and like tight and interesting film. And Italian Job, yeah, also came out around that time. <laughs> yeah, Ocean's Eleven came out in two thousand one. Uh -huh. uh, Italian Job came out in two thousand three, and it is a remake of a nineteen. 69 British film, although it's more of an homage. Sure. Well, and just like how the, Ocean's Eleven is a remake. Exactly. Um, you can just picture the Paramount people when Ocean's Eleven hits going, okay, well, there's another one of these, isn't there? Yeah, didn't we do... Isn't there like another a, like heist? Like a team-up heist movie from the 60s? <laughs> yeah, we could do a heist thing and there's with, a car ch with like car chases and stuff. I would say this movie is heist and Ocean's Eleven is con artist. I mean, there's a heist, but like they are, perf they are performers. Whereas this movie is like all about like cracking safes <laughs> and driving yeah. away fast. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, in Mini Coopers. Yes, but anyway, that's what we're talking about this week. We're not talking about if it's good or bad. We're comparing it to Star Wars. But of course, what we're actually going to do is probably talk about the movie at length, and then at the end, Man. we'll be like, "Oh, right, in Star Wars." I kind of want to watch the original Italian job. Apparently I know. I kind of do, too. I never have. Apparently, it's good. My guess, though, is that the original Italian job does not have a uh, truck in it with what looks to be like a billboard for Pepsi Blue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, with, man. With Rich. With yeah. my man Rich driving yeah. it. <laughs> Everyone's got That's a cool right. wrench. name. <laughs> wrench. <laughs> wrench is like essentially part of the crew, but like must have only been available for a couple days of shooting. <laughs> wrench is like wrench is like uh, some guy's friend, like mm -hmm. handsome handsome Rob's friend. Right. And then they're like he like gets them he helps them make the Mini Coopers really fast. Yeah. So, and then they're okay. like they're like wrench. Do you want to be a part of the real crew? And he's like, Yeah, yeah I can. Sure. I can do one thing. What day are you guys doing? <laughs> yeah, it's like because I can be there on Tuesday, and if it's not on Tuesday, I can't do it. Yeah, that's as that's as much as I can be around for. Um, and they're like, well, we were gonna do it on Wednesday, but you've really thrown a wrench into it. Mm -hmm. Um, and he's like, that's why they call me Wrench. So it's cause this movie, if you haven't seen it, if you've been living under a rock for nineteen years, which I was, <laughs> it follows a a group of of thieves. The the title 
of the movie is the cold open first scene that yes. we see. Yes. It, it is them stealing a, a safe full of gold in Venice. Um, in fact, one of the first notes I wrote down was, wow, like the 14 year old version of me probably didn't understand a lot of like dialogue in this movie. Not, not like that there's a lot to understand, but like yeah, one of the right. first things is Donald Sutherland talking to his daughter, Charlize Theron on the phone. And, uh, he says something like, I got you a present. And she's like, Oh, are, are you in the neighborhood or something like that? And he goes, no, I'm in Venice. And her line was like, with your parole officer's approval, of course. Right. To kind of be like, like, like that to me, I, I don't think I ever knew that Donald Sutherland was out of jail on parole, yeah. you know, like as a kid. Yeah. And then actually, that's funny. The second note I have is, wow, this cast, it's like Ocean's Eleven kicked ass and they were like, okay, who's left? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who do we got left in here? Because let's be honest, it needs to only be men. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. And one girl. That's the thing yeah. is this one, they were like, they, we have one girl and she's part of the team. Right. Okay? Yeah. And the ratio of men to women is far more in favor of women than Ocean's Eleven. Eleven guys and a passive lady versus yes. like five guys and an active lady. Yep, 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 yep. That's, so that's moving up the ladder. <laughs> that's Hey, that's breaking a glass ceiling right yeah. there. Charlize, Charlize went, came in and she was like, I get okay. Actually, I do know a fun fact about this movie, which I wonder if you've heard about this. Oh yes, I bet I have because I watch the bonus features on the DVD all the time. <laughs> so I but saw. Go an ahead. I saw an interview with Charlize a while ago, um, of uh, like modern day Charlize uh -huh. Theron, and so they had everybody was doing. Everybody had to do drive training for this movie, right? And these sexist pieces of shit. When Charlize showed up to set, or not when she showed up to set, but whenever they were given out the schedule, she was she was given like way more training than everyone else mm. because she's a girl. Interesting. And so she was like, "This doesn't make any sense. We're doing stunt driving. Right. We should all have the yeah, same amount. None of, of us should know how to do this. <laughs> yeah. We should all have the same amount of." training because we're all doing the same kind of driving and presumably none of us are stunt drivers in real life right and so she just like got really salty about it and did a bunch of training on her own before shooting even started and showed up to set as the best driver and was, yeah, I was just gonna say what i remember from like the bonus features of like the the making of the stunts or whatever is that she did a lot of her driving in in yeah. the movie <laughs> she showed up to set being like i learned all this by by myself or like yeah. you know with with, an, with a trainer or whatever and so she she like didn't need the extra time they scheduled in because they just assumed because she i guess because she was a woman that she would need more time which is such a weird 2003 yeah. Yeah. I'm sure they would still make that mistake now, like in some productions. But it's such a weird, like, like thought to be like, okay, well, we've got how many movie stars are in this? Like five or six? Right. Yeah. Okay. I mean, well, we got to teach them how to drive. Think like, hey, we're gonna do a stunt driving course, and everybody comes, and we teach you all the same things all at the same time for the same amount of time. And then we'll just ta tack on extra days if you're not getting the hang of it, you know? Like yeah, exactly. If, if you are falling behind or can't do it, then we'll, 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 yeah, we'll have some extra time set aside, whatever. Not like preemptively being like, we think you're going to suck at it because you're right. a woman. Yeah. And so we're going to give you this time, which made me think about her in uh, 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 what is the name of that movie? It's like one of my favorite movies, Mad Max Fury Road. Oh, I was like, that thing you do? Also, she's in that. Um, wow. Is, what, all my favorite movies have Charlize Theron in them. Um, well, it depends. How do you feel about Atomic Blonde? <laughs> never saw it. Looked I good, I haven't either. Though. Yeah, it does look fun. But no, she was a badass driver in Mad Max Fury Road, too. And a lot of that movie was done practically as well. And so I'm, I bet she was like, guys, I was on the Italian job. Okay. I don't need. I don't need all this training. What are we doing I, today? Minis, Mini Coopers, any kind of mini car? Oh, oh the weird. No, it's a tank with spikes all over. It. Yeah. Oh, it's a huge semi truck. That's uh, different. All right. Um. But okay. So we, our our cast of characters, which it's funny. In fact, hang on one sec. Uh, it it opens with the Italian job, and uh uh. 
it's funny. The only characters who don't have nicknames are Donald Sutherland, the like leader, Charlie, who's like gonna be the leader, which is Mark Wahlberg, and Ed Norton, who we end up finding out is the bad guy. Everybody else has like a crazy colorful nickname. Yeah. Left ear. Uh, most deaf plays left ear, and then uh, Jason Statham is handsome, handsome Rob. Rob, and then uh, Seth Green's character I can't remember his uh, Ly- Miles Ly- Ly- Lyle 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 he insists mm-hmm. on being called Napster because his but that claim uh, is that he actually invented Napster. But that isn't until much later in the yeah, movie. Yeah, much okay? later. Yeah, the the, <laughs> the the structure of this movie is bonkers. Yeah. We see a lot of planning and work leading up to uh, a con, a heist where they're intending to drive the Mini Coopers into Steve's house. Yeah. And then when they get there, there's a party going on next door. Like, like No, we're getting ahead of ourselves. We're getting ahead of we ourselves. See all that work? <laughs> so the first thing that happens is a heist. Yeah, in okay, yeah. Venice. In Venice. Now, Which is, I, have, is successful. I have so much to say just about that heist. <laughs> <laughs> Having rewatched all of Hustle and thinking about like project management and planning and stuff like that, why didn't they know exactly where to paint the explosive paint when they got there? You know, like, yeah. like Seth Green has like what they call the entire time in this movie something like digital blueprint or 3D yes. blueprint or something like that. Why, why did they... He, he he was like live on the computer going all right and measure 23 foot 6 or whatever like mm-hmm. Edward Norton and and whoever else had to paint the explosion explosion explosive stuff they only had to know like two dimensions <laughs> yeah like 21 feet and 12 feet just remember those numbers <laughs> remember 21 and 12 why do you why do you have to paint the exact outline rectangle of where the safe is why can't you just like blow up the whole damn ceiling <laughs> yeah you could you could have just done a circ a circle yeah. in the general area and you would have yeah. gotten it guys it was so it? confusing to me like just just go all in guys <laughs> like it's so it's so cute that they paint an exact rect. Every time they blow something up, they're like, "It has to be the exact it has rectangle to fall shape." Through. Yeah, exactly. It has to fall through like a cartoon, busting like an through elevator a wall in free fall. Yeah. Yes, it has to be an exact square rectangle of of the thing that falls through. And also, it's they just have ex- so funny that like he's using this like three D model coming from someone who spends every day in a three D model of some form. Hey, don't we uh, all? You know what to, I mean? To to inform his team live, like. Presumably, the model you have isn't somehow like live updating when they no. like move a chair three inches. <laughs> like, also, why? Why don't you guys already have these dimensions written down? <laughs> and like, you don't move a safe either. So no. like, once they know, once they know where the safe is, yeah. it's like they don't really need a guy to be like, all right, here's where the safe is. Right. Like, we already know where the safe is. And That's then like, what happens is they blow it up through the floor. It falls down into what we think it falls into a boat, and then then the boat drives away down the canals of Venice, but uh, that's just all a shell game diversion because it actually falls down into the water and they have two divers go down and get all the gold out. I, they keep calling it our baby, which I thought yeah. was so funny. And then I wrote early 2000s communication devices that work both at range and underwater. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, they are... This movie has so much Star Wars technology in it. It's so funny. Yeah, they they have like a comm system that are uh, that they're all on at the same time yeah. that yes can work underwater and also miles away yeah it's like what what cell and like also i mean cell phones were barely a thing at this time I know, like, yeah digital liter- cameras <laughs> digital ca- li- literally at the very beginning whenever donald sutherland is on the phone He's talking to his daughter, Shirley's throne for two seconds, and then like at the end of the conversation, he's like, I'm on a cell phone. I'll call you on a landline later. Yeah, and I'm like, right. yeah, because he has minutes. Right. Like he's, yeah. he's probably and he's like overseas. <laughs> he's like, I can't just talk to you for right. multiple for okay, guys. My singular wireless plan is gonna just have me on this one. <laughs> singular. Okay, for our I know we've got some younger listeners, like we have some listeners that are in high school. Mm-hmm. So, like, let me tell you, let us tell you about something that this is when Mike and I were in high school. Um, you used to have minutes mm-hmm. of time that you were allowed to talk on the phone with your cell phone plan. 
Okay, and it became it was a huge deal once they started offering unlimited minutes. Right. Like that was a thing. Like nowadays, everything's unlimited minutes. You have unlimited or whatever. Same is true about texting. Yes, it was ten cents to send and ten cents to receive a text. Yes, and so your plan would have like one thousand minutes a month or whatever, or right. and it would have like I remember I had texting. And it was something like 300 texts a month. And right. it was like both incoming and outgoing. And very short, very shortly after I got texting, my parents realized that that was not going to be sustainable. And we had yep. to figure out a better way to totally. <laughs> uh, a better plan, get a better plan. Um, but but like, yeah, imagine had- imagine sending like the following the following exchange. Where the duck are you? Duck, <laughs> duck. Gosh, Sorry fuck that was like five texts that was 50 cents <laughs> that was half a dollar to say that yeah all right was it worth it was it worth it right. um and then yeah. of course the re- the recipient would be like what do you mean i'm at home that's two texts that's another 20 cents and then you say you're supposed to be at such and such place we're all here now waiting for you like there's another four <laughs> mm-hmm. all of that was a dollar for each party involved <laughs> Yeah. Okay. And was it worth it? No. And like so you a said money minutes. printing machine. And there used to be a thing where, like, after, like, during the day, your minutes. Yeah, were, like unlimited nights and weekends. <laughs> yes. So, like, after six p.m., like, I remember literally calling people on my on my friend's cell phones because I didn't have a cell phone for a while, and I would have to call my mom and dad on like a friend's cell phone in like junior high to be like, "Are you coming or whatever?" to pick me up, and my friends would be like, "Make sure the call is less than a minute because if it's more than a minute." <laughs> Do you remember this? Like, yeah, if it was totally. more than a minute, it would round up it to the next minutes, minute. Right. So there was like, keep it less than 60 seconds. So that right. way it's just one minute, which is <laughs> it's so wild to think about. Totally. Like, I understand. I think I understand to an extent the science of the, the bandwidth that we were talking about back then and why minutes were like limited because you only had so much like satellite space and right. uh, like tower the 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 wire towers running around or whatever sure. of like only had the so much infrastructure bandwidth. hadn't been built up to what it is today yeah but like just thinking about how quickly everything went to unlimited i'm like could we have just been doing unlimited all along <laughs> yeah, <laughs> were right. they just pretending that we had to like really make sure that we had only 10 minutes a day right. or whatever it's funny thinking about commercials for cell phones at the time because there of course was the can you hear me now guy Yep, which yep, yep. that the whole premise of that was like with Verizon you can hear him now like cuz yes. we have good signal or whatever good and then coverage. like the other one that just came to mind when you said nights and weekends or whatever was um i remember there was a commercial that it was like nights officially begin at 7 now cuz like everyone was going 7 7 like the commercial was a bunch <laughs> of people yelling 7 so presumably a nighttime call at that point would have been like, I don't know, eight? Like yeah. Eight yeah, or something after? like that. Yeah. So crazy. So crazy to think about that. that and, and also, what a weird relic of, and, and such a small amount of time. Totally. Right? Yeah. Like in the grand course of history, I mean, technology exp- like gets better it's so like the fast. the iPod. Yes. Like, yes. We went so fast from like Discman type things to streaming that there was just a little blip where mp3 player download files to a device (laughs) that has only one purpose (laughs) as a device specifically man this is taking me back to like last year whenever i was like i'm gonna start carrying around an ipod and i'm gonna get a a digital camera and a digital camera and a flip phone i need to go back to that because my life was significantly better when i was doing that (laughs) except my my ipod got stolen so i can't actually do that anymore yeah it got stolen Um, out of my car while we're on this sort of technology Technology thing. I wrote down this whole long note. Uh, it, it's it's all to do with that 3D model that Seth Green is looking at during the titular Italian job. But I wrote this. OMG, Seth Green showing the 3D model of the building and saying things like Cartesian coordinates and pitch and yaw. Like he mm-hmm. was saying things like, I can control the pitch and yaw of blah, 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 whatever. And I have a full set of Cartesian coordinates. There's no reason for someone to use those terms with a 3D visualization. Like, no. It, it's it's not necessary. It's like pretend superficial geek speak for the rest yeah. of the guys to say stuff like um in English, please. In English, but like, he he's the nerd. He's the computer guy. But like he's he clearly 
has an understanding of like social cues if he wants really cool loud speakers to play rock and roll music and like claims to have invented napster that's like a piracy thing like Mm -hmm. like he ought to be able to say things like we have a we have a 3d version of the entire building and i can show you anywhere on my computer you know like yeah you can still talk like a person (laughs) i just hate that kind of shit because that is a thing i i do you know, yeah. like work in 3D models. Like I'm sure other people, when they like have an expertise and they watch a movie, they're like, "That's not how that would be." But like, it's just funny. Like, why did you write the like lowest hanging fruit, like nerd sounding words? <laughs> yeah, it's like, um, it's like, what spell did that temptress girl cast? Or what? Yes, that yes. High elevated IQ temptress girl cast. <laughs> There was something on there's something on Doctor Who they do all the time, which they, it, it used to do. There was like a certain doctor that hated uh, actor for the doctor that hated like all the techno babble that came with uh-huh. sci-fi. Right. And so he would just change whatever it was. He would just use this line all the time where he's like, I'm reversing the polarity of the neutron flow, which doesn't mean anything. Uh-huh. And especially because polarity and neutron like neutrons don't have right, polarity yeah. <laughs> in the first place. So it like, doesn't mean anything at all. Right. But he right. would just like he would just say it all the time. And so now it's like an inside bit where they That's occasionally funny. will still use it but it's that kind of thing it's just techno babble yeah that doesn't mean anything well and that's the thing those phrases do mean things and yes. they they aren't even not applicable to what he's showing they're just like superfluous <laughs> yeah. like why would you say cartesian coordinates people don't necessarily know what that means even though it's true you know like use jargon of someone who would be like cartesian coordinates isn't even like a 3d modeling jargon really no maybe it was then i don't know but like, and i definitely know what cartesian uh, coordinates are and it's just am x agreeing y with you. and z coordinates like, okay sure then i did know what they were but like his model was not built in like hyper simplistic like blowing up the death star early rendering it was like a good like cgi model (laughs) yeah yeah anyway it's it's so goofy and that's the whole movie um so Uh, then they do this they do this heist in venice it goes off without a hitch i wrote okay they had to do it that day why was the safe being moved who are these guys who uh, own the safe we don't know anything about them which i guess is fine it's like the goober but yeah this this whole like this whole like cold (laughs) cold open heist yeah it's just like here's a cool thing (laughs) oh interesting they call steve the inside man of Uh because it's like the wheel man the computer expert the explosive expert and the inside man which i don't know is that like the face like he's like a blanket term used in heisty conny things i would say like in the oceans 11 averse danny and uh brad brad Pitt. pitt and to an extent matt damon depending on the movie and honestly I would call the the Mormon twins in certain roles they play oh, yeah. the inside man. Also, I would call uh, what's his face, um, old guy, the old uh, guy who's who pretend. Yes, Reiner, anyone who Carl is Carl Reiner, <laughs> anyone who is acting yes. as another person, right? Like is it, an inside I, I man. picture like if I'm the guy, the Roper, as they call it, who's like coaxing the Mark into like being friends with me. I would say like, oh hey, my my buddy has this really incredible investing thing. I should I should introduce you at some point. I would take him to the inside and introduce him to the inside man. Hmm. I see. You do know a lot about this kind of stuff. Sure. Well, I've watched that one show a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also wrote, how did they learn about this gold? Like, it doesn't yeah. really matter at all, but I wish I had any context about this cold open job upon reflection. Again, it's like an emotional, like, cool, fun, like, action scene. But, like, they're all Americans. Yeah. How did they know there was this safe full of gold in Italy? <laughs> Yeah, it's very strange. <laughs> it's but so weird. The heist does go... So, so the big thing we take away from this heist is that do, not Donald Glover, Donald Sutherland uh-huh. is the 
former head like right. guy he's like of training this... Mark Wahlberg to kind of replace him. Yeah, he, he he's like he was like the leader of them all, but I this wrote, is his last boy, job. Boy, Donald Sutherland is it. Cuz yeah. like right before that I had said, man, this movie is really just like I don't know, a bunch of bunch, bunch of other Hollywood guys, but like Donald Sutherland was a great choice. Yeah, he's great. And he's sort of passing the torch on this job on to Mark Wahlberg aka charlie in this movie and charlie's like essentially the same he's like the has the same job as as donald sutherland he's the guy right. who he's the planner he's planning everything right. and donald sutherland is the safe cracker um right. for this job and the job goes well they steal all the gold they scuba it out mm-hmm. and then as they're driving away to freedom <gasps> edward norton turned oh yeah edward norton's in this movie yeah. edward norton turns on them right and takes out a gun which they didn't have any guns for the whole heist because they're yeah, very cool they, they don't even use guns. said that at some point like donald sutherland says to to mark Wahlberg, like an excellent a, a perfectly planned job not a single gun or something like that like yeah but yeah, yeah they don't they don't has, need guns. he has his goons like essentially kill them like he thinks that they are all killed because they happen to still have their breather from the scuba portion of the job in their like van and it it gets like pushed off a off a cliff or off a bridge rather and uh everybody survives except donald sutherland donald sutherland gets shot to death and then charlie's thrown into his daughter and then we find out now we're going to cut to now (laughs) my note is damn he is shooting (laughs) yeah 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 i also wrote embarrassingly this is the first time i ever heard the song money which in this movie (laughs) is not performed by pink floyd (laughs) no but then we cut to present and it's Charlie's throne and she's a safe cracker, but she does it for the authorities. That's my next note. Oh, Charlie's also cracks safes, but for the good guys, cops. <laughs> yeah, she's like, let me test out these safes for you. And they're and like, also, damn. She never looks inside. No, no, like, no. She doesn't need to know. <laughs> and, but the guess when she does look inside. Yeah. She does look inside at the very end. Right. Because there's she several, wants to get that bastard who killed her dad. I also several, wrote, what, why does she have a storefront for her safe cracking business? She has yeah. a secretary? Like, how much money are you pulling in that you, like, pay rent in San Francisco for a storefront? Yeah, they do They do all things. Is that where she is, or is she in L.A.? I don't remember. It's like, I guess, I guess like, this, the security business is good enough that you can have. Oh, man. Um, but this movie is so so to get outside of plot okay here, here's can i tell you i thought this movie to get outside of plot for a second now that we've finally gotten through the cold open and are at the beginning of the movie <laughs> right before we're supposed to go to the break right. but i thought this movie in my mind the italian job was so was such like a slick movie uh, like in my uh-huh. mind it was fancy slick like gentlemen sl- criminals gentlemen thieves yeah like really yeah. sleek and and yes. just like like very high society yeah, it's not it's like kind of grungy <laughs> yeah it's kind of grungy yeah and i don't know why like my... i would i would call it a crime movie yeah i don't know it's, why it's slick for a crime movie but it's like yeah, I don't know why my perception of it was as something more like high society. Right. But it, but it's just like I mean, Ocean's Eleven is slicker and right. like more high society. Like you know, yeah. Like in this, it is very. Ocean's Eleven is like a chess match. <laughs> yeah, and this one is like we're gonna get revenge on this motherfucker. Yeah. So that's what happens. And we is... have to go buy weapons from Skinny Pete. <laughs> yes, the most the giantest man at a driving also, range. Yeah. He's 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 large, but he's not like. <laughs> no, I know so that whole scene of like don't stare. Like, yeah. why was I have so many questions about just that scene? <laughs> yes, it's so strange when they go to Skinny Pete, who is a, a very large man, and it's, so it's funny that he's named Skinny Pete. And then like Charlie's like talks to Most Def and is like, don't stare at him. He doesn't like people stare. And, and then he's like, he, stare then, at what? And he's like, at anything or something like that. And then like Most that. Def. And most Def, of course, can't help but, like, stare because he's so large. He's, like, cartoon he's, level, like, sees a pretty girl and his jaw hits the floor yeah, and like, his, like, he, like, floats out. He's, like, buh, 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 buh. But then it's also <laughs> weird because it's, like, this guy is big, but he's not so big that no, I would be, like. No, and he's, like, welcoming. <laughs> yeah, and he's nice. And he's, he's like, he's, like, welcome. Like, like, he's, like, what like, do you need, man? It's not like this. Like, I wouldn't be, like, <laughs> yeah, because be like, he's Whoa. so. 
I'd be like, oh, big guy. Okay, moving on. He's a, yeah. he's just a human being, right? Yeah, yeah, he's a human being. Okay, moving on. It's right. so weird. It, it plays awfully. Yeah, it plays it, so weird. <laughs> it's like so uncomfortable, and I think it's supposed to be funny, and it's not. Also, okay, I wrote, Steve could have gotten off the grid and lived anywhere, and he changed only his last name, which is a very yeah. Ben Kenobi thing of him to do. And he moved to Los Angeles? Like, yeah. why? Because that's yeah. where you shot the movie? <laughs> they were like, hey, <laughs> hey, we're shooting here. So you got, sorry, man. I know you want to live in like the, like somewhere way off the grid, like yeah. in, in like the south of Spain, like most deaf moves to at the end, but you got to right. shoot. We're shooting in LA. Sorry. Like you have hundreds of millions in gold bars. Like, why not even just move to like a better place? <laughs> yeah, some place. LA sucks. <laughs> LA does suck. And if I had that much money, I would move somewhere where I could be remote and it wouldn't be an issue because I had so much money. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I'd, oh. I'd go to the fucking mountains, baby. Come on. I wrote, here's what they say later when they're like figuring out how to get him back or whatever. A video blueprint. They needed, yes. they needed Charlize Theron to go in as the cable ma uh, uh, maintenance person to get a video blueprint of the house and audio surveillance of his phone. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's so Which funny. she can do with just a pin camera. Yeah. A camera that's on a flag pin, and right. she gets an, they get an entire video blueprint of the entire house with this just tiny little camera. That's so nuts. So they, they, they track down Steve because of like these contacts, and they're like, we're going to heist him. We're going to get it back. They get Charlize on board because she's a great safe cracker, and they're going to need her to crack the safe. Uh -huh. They... She has to go in as the cable person because he knows what the rest of them look like. Sure. Of course he hits on her because she's Charlize Theron and he's Edward Norton. And he's right. he's at maybe his slimiest in he's this movie. He's so slimy. Yeah. It's like peak slime Edward Norton. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to think. Like, I know that he's the good guy in some movies, but seeing him in this movie, it's hard to think of him as how I he's know. ever a good guy. I, this was my introduction to him. So I only ever knew of him as this like grody goatee ass slime ball. <laughs> yeah, he's nasty. He's like so. And in fact, this was also my first exposure to everyone in this movie, maybe except for Seth Green, although it might have been my first time seeing him too. So like <laughs> as a teen, I thought Mark Wahlberg was cool and smart. I yep. thought Charlize Theron was a like stunt driver. I thought Seth yep. Green was hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like yeah, all true things. Every time I saw Jason Statham in anything else, like I remember the first time I saw that crazy movie Crank. I remember oh, yeah. saying like it's got handsome Rob in it. <laughs> <laughs> like everyone else is like, yeah, we know huh? what that is. Yeah, yeah. I when when I think when I found out that Seth Green was in this movie, I like. I texted Mike. I was like, oh, they got Seth Green in this? Because I was so <laughs> What is this pumped. movie from 2003 or something? Because once again, I thought this was a fancy movie. And Seth Green's not in fancy He's movies. not fancy. No, exactly. You're right. And yeah. So it, it, that, and and um, that's kind of, I guess, part of the thing I was going for when I was saying, like, this is a heist movie versus a con movie. Or, like, a thief movie. Like, yeah. these are, like, rough and tumble thieves. <laughs> also, so... Have we gone through the characters? We have. We basically we have. have. Yeah. Um, and the oh yeah, and of this course, not to be forgotten, Wrench. Wrench, my man, Wrench, who is also a relatively famous person, I think. Also, Frankie Steve, G is who that. Steve kind of is is bitter that like he doesn't get the acclaim that Charlie gets because Charlie was the planner, but Steve's like, I could have planned it. In fact, look, I planned this. I planned gunning you all down. Yeah, but like for all of your like cockiness. Why are you still sitting on the majority of the gold? Like, you need a yeah. fence who isn't like a pawn shop operator. Like, yeah, what are you operator. doing selling him one brick at a time? Yeah, That's who, not the, his fault. That's your fault, dude. Yes. The guy literally is like, I can only do one or two bricks at a and time. He's like, and it's like, I'm sorry, what'd you say? Like, he yeah. like, threatens him his life all the time. And it's like, you picked a small ass storefront pawn shop, dog. <laughs> yeah, you need to like if you want to move this gold, you should all this gold shouldn't be gold anymore. I know. You, sh you should have sold all this and it should all be in like stocks and bonds at this point. Totally. 
It's crazy that it's a year later and he still has that much gold. Which I and guess he even bluffs at one point to to Charlie and the gang once they like confront him at that restaurant when he's out on a date with Charlie Theron. He he says something like, "We're gonna get it," and he's like, "I've already moved most of it, man. What are you gonna try to like take me for a couple of bricks or whatever?" And yeah. and Mark Wahlberg's not having it. He's like, "I like I don't believe you," but it's like. Why You're didn't a you bad do that? Criminal. <laughs> yeah. Why didn't you do that? Which I get. I guess you could make like, the why. <laughs> right. Like I get bluffing in that in that moment. But like, do you think when he said those words out loud, it's when he realized like, shit, that would have been a lot smarter. <laughs> yeah, I should have sold all this gold by now. Shit. Like I understand that there's there's probably this like thing with actual stolen goods where you can't re- like fence all of it immediately because then it'll look suspicious or whatever. And like, sure, someone will be like, Oh, sure. all this Balinese dancer gold showed up. That's what they call it. Cause there's a Balinese yeah, dancer it has a on stamp it. Of it. But like, you know what gold is malleable and meltable. Like, yeah. Melt that shit down. The oh, first thing you could have done is fence like two or three bricks and buy your fucking own little forge furnace. <laughs> yes. And make them all look different. Yeah. And then also, I don't know, go to a bunch of these little small time fences yes, and give like, each of them two bricks and get you all doing? your money. And then put it all in investments and live the rest of your life on that 4%. Yeah. <laughs> which is what we talked about in the Yeah, check the Patreon. out our Patreon when I go into detail of finance influencers. <laughs> yeah, check it out. It's actually pretty interesting. I know the way that Mike said it made it seem like it's uh, uh, intolerable, but it's actually pretty interesting. <laughs> um, and of course, what we learn from uh, from Skinny Pete is uh, like once once they find out like how Steve is fencing the gold and like Steve kills the guy because like yeah. something stupid uh, he, because he knows like, Are you that recording he stole. Me? It's because he knows he knows he stole it. Oh, like that's he, right. He's like, wait, I know. Wait, he's like, heard, he like heard about oh, the no, job. Oh no, my English. Um. Anyway, they go back to Skinny Pete at some point, and Skinny Pete says the best line in this movie and in cinema: "There's three things you don't mess with: yes. Mother Nature, mother-in-laws, or mother freaking Ukrainians." <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Oh it's, my God. it's very good because they save their one PG-13 fuck for Edward Norton in the helicopter, going, "Where's my truck? Where's my fucking truck?" <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't even realize. I didn't even track that that's where the fuck was. Yeah. In my head, Skinny Pete did say motherfucking Ukrainians. No, he says motherfucking. <laughs> that's hilarious. Motherfucking Ukrainians. Uh, and, of course, the other greatest line in cinema history, um, accompanied by the greatest action. It's like a it's a line read and, and physical action combination unparalleled. Mm. Mark Wahlberg lines up for a three-pointer. In their like yep. warehouse slash yeah, he and basketball handsome, court. <laughs> he and handsome Rob love playing basketball. Yeah, and he says, "I'm gonna do it like we do the Italian job." Swish. <laughs> yep. And they were like, like, "That's the take. That's the take." And and it is it is like cool that like the final payoff ends up essentially being um the way they did the first heist. You know, like just bigger. Yeah. So but, for, like, it took me probably five times seeing that movie as a kid, because, again, I watch it all the time, to go, oh, when he said, we're going to do it like the Italian job, he meant literally. Like, they blow a hole in the floor, yeah. and the thing comes down, the big safe, except it's a truck. <laughs> and instead of being underwater, they're in the, like, uh, un- uh, subway system. Right. So, so basically what happens is they have this whole plan of where they're going to rob his house, but then his cover is blown because he's on a date with Charlize Theron because she has to go on a date with him. Uh, and it's because funny, too, because of- they make all these plans to rob the house, and they're like how can we get in the door and out in time? And they're like, well, hey, you know what's small? They like measure the door and they measure the Mini Coopers and they outfit the Mini Coopers so they can haul gold. Like they do all this, all this planning for a heist that I would have loved to have watched. <laughs> yes, just re- just reversing a Mini Cooper into the hallway and yeah. being like, here we go. And they train um, how to get through all the halls and stuff. Yeah. Really which, disappointing to not see that. <laughs> which we don't get to see that because her, her guess, cover is blown. Yeah, I guess they still use the cars, but... Because she says she says something that her dad used to say, and she of course... She says the most specific phrase in the universe. Oh, it I, may as well I have trust, been, like, a spy password. <laughs> I trust everybody. I just don't trust the devil inside them. Which is like... Which is what her dad used to say. Is, and so Steve is, knew her dad, and he killed her dad, and he's what like... What does <gasps> that mean? 
<laughs> Nothing. It's like, so stupid. Is it just is is it like a Christianity thing? No, I think it's just a stupid phrase because it's essentially saying I trust everybody, I just don't trust everybody. Right. Like you're saying I trust everybody, but I don't trust everybody. I trust everybody when they're being good, but when they're being bad, I do not trust them. <laughs> when they're being a little devil, I don't <laughs> trust them anymore. So dumb. It's very silly. But then then so and then instead of that heist, we get a whole different heist and then there's all these extra and then like Steve like, does a shell game with the armored trucks which of course Napster is somehow able with his i suppose just camera he's able to see with the, the red light camera yeah on he, he's the, able to see all the the rear wheels of all the trucks and see which one is riding the lowest because that would be the one that's full of stuff but like which that i don't know if you're gonna bother with hiring three armored trucks why don't you just separate the gold I know, I had that thought too. And I also had the thought of this conflict was solved too quickly where they were like, it's yes. a shell game. They're like, oh no, There's... what's it going to be? Oh, it's that one. <laughs> yeah, I was like, why did we introduce this? This was so easily solved. It feels like it shouldn't have been introduced. Like, They're like, it's a I, shell I, game. I think it was smart to do the shell game thing to make Steve look like at least a worthy adversary. Uh, but then make it more of a struggle. <laughs> yeah, because within five minutes. Which one minutes, is it? How do we know? Oh, it's like, that one. <laughs> it's like the next scene. Like the next scene, he's like, check in on the first light. Check and see which one's riding the lowest. Right. Okay, it's that one. Great, we did it. And then and then and then we lose the other two trucks, and they're never heard from again. Yeah. And it's like it feels like we didn't need that then. Like this right. is too. It's Plus, too simple. they have three Mini Coopers. Like maybe they could have. Sent ben. each person on to each one to somehow find. I don't know. I don't know what the solve would have been, but you're right. It was the Chewie was on another transport. I was just about <laughs> to say that. I was like, it's too easy. Yeah. It's like just, yeah. But so we get another heist. It's the same like structure as the Italian job. They blow up a perfect rectangle. And perfect the, rectangle that they then cover with another perfect rectangle. That's uh -huh. right. A billboard for Pepsi Blue. Mm hmm. <laughs> And Steve says, where the fuck is my truck or whatever? And this movie is, this movie is like, honestly. <laughs> they do how? drive indoors. They drive down the subway stairs and through the subway station and then onto the subway tracks, which yes, they stop which the fun. train. But like one would suppose the third rail was still electrified. <laughs> yeah, I, don't know. I guess. Napster has control over the whole fucking city at this point. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Napster has hacked into the so so he the reason he originally hacked into the traffic was because they needed a getaway. Needed, they needed a getaway where they'd have green lights yeah. the whole way, and he's like, "Well, I'll just hack into the, the the like traffic system for the entire city," and then that ends up being very useful. <laughs> right? For, yeah, for I the, guess that is why we see them do all the planning for the original heist because we need to see that they're agile in a little car that can haul a lot of gold. We need to see that they have control over the stoplights. Like. Yeah. Okay, fine. Yeah. Um and then uh, then that this is also a, the planning for the second heist is whenever uh Seth Green's like you have to call me Napster now. Yeah, right. <laughs> Actually, um, he says you have to call me the Napster. That's right, yeah. Which of course they just they just shortened to Napster cuz it would be so clunky to be like, "Hey, the Napster." Yeah. <laughs> um two other things I have before going to the break. Um one, at one point he like plays chicken with a helicopter under a bridge yeah. Yeah. or in a tunnel or something like just drive, drive straight at the helicopter. Helicopters are so delicate. They couldn't like <laughs> recover from like a minor collision with a fucking car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How are you and even also, hovering inside there? That's like also, not easy. <laughs> helicopters are not as maneuverable as a small, tiny Mini Cooper. No. Like you could play chicken and then be like, I'm out of your way. And then you would be out of the way. And the helicopter would be like, ah, shit, I got to turn I, this whole thing around. Yeah. And then the other thing it's related to this. At Paramount's Kings Island, which is a uh, amusement park in the Cincinnati area, they had a Mini Cooper roller coaster. And I don't like roller coasters, but it was oh. one of those, like, it's a thrill, but it, like, doesn't go upside down or, like, warp speed or whatever. Sure. Because um, it has, like, a story. And you're in a Mini Cooper, and you bust through walls and all sorts of stuff like that. And then at one point, you are, like, met with a helicopter. The helicopter is, like, firing guns at you, which is not what happens in the movie. But, no. like, it's to make it more Hollywood and have, like, fire explosions near you. Um, anyway, after a while, Kings Island, the, uh, the Paramount ownership or sponsorship or however that worked out went away. 
but like they still had all these rides like they used to have like nickelodeon shit there they had all sorts Mm -hmm. of like paramount and paramount adjacent things so at some point the italian job the ride became like hollywood stunt driver (laughs) yeah (laughs) yes it was a fun ride though to my recollection I love that kind of shit. There, there is also so many random. God, what was it? And when I went to Disneyland Paris with my friend JT, we went uh-huh. to. They had like just a, in their Hollywood section. It was just it was like an Armageddon ride, <laughs> and it was so weird and That's like really weird. old and and it wasn't a ride either. It was like a special effects experience. But you walked, you would walk through, and they'd be like, "You're extras in this scene," and like do this thing and react this way whenever this thing happens. And make sure you keep your eyes peeled because you don't want to miss a thing. (laughs) (laughs) And then it's also Michael Clark Duncan, who is dead, I believe, right? Rest in peace. I don't remember Uh, if he's alive or not. Yeah, no, I think you're right. But it's him speaking speaking normally with French overdubbed. Oh my god. <laughs> so he's like giving you the whole lay down and it's like giant <laughs> asteroid. And then it's just Michael Clark Duncan being like, hi. Well I got really southern just then. Michael Clark hi. Duncan. Oh. <laughs> Michael. Hi, it's me, Michael Clark Duncan. Um, oh, then Charlize has to open the safe by touch like her dad. Yes, because that's what I was going to say. technology this, doesn't work. The Worthington 1000. <laughs> this movie is well written in a way because there's a couple of Chekhov guns where it's like, yeah, she it never has looks, little like payoffs. Yeah. She's like, she never looks in the safe, but she does at the very end. And then also, she always uses technology to open her safes, but her dad always right. did it by hand. And so as soon as they said that, I was like, bet she's going to have to open the last one by touch. Right. And, and she, then does, she does. And then she looks inside. Yeah, it's really it's like that. Dad. And then they send all those gold bars down the little slide. <laughs> yeah. I was like this can't be the fastest way to do this. I know. There's just so much shit like that in this movie. They're like and you go to a little slide and you go to a little slide and yeah. you go to a little slide and they just like <laughs> Also, the, the 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 little um containers they had in the back of each Mini Cooper are the perfect size for the amount of each yes, gold bars right. that are in there. And I'm like, they didn't know how many there were. How did they know how did oh, they know it's gonna be so and perfect? Napster like does a quick calculation of how much dollar gold value money, it's yeah. all worth and he misses like a zero or something and then he realizes what he did and he's at like the baggage carousel of a train station and he's like Yeah, yeah! <laughs> And then he goes, just, just feeling, feeling the spirit. The Holy spirit. <laughs> you should get on that or something like that. It's so Seth oh, Green. It's and like, what you know, does he- everyone want with their share of the money? Oh, this is important. Handsome Rob wants like a, an Aston Ast- Martin vanquish. An Aston Martin. Which can I just say, Handsome Rob is not that handsome. It's weird that that's his name. Because yeah, it's like, more like sexy Rob. It's like, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. That's what he should be called because he's like, like suave and sly. I've always had that. I've always had the impression of what's that actor's name? Why can't I remember Jason it? Jason right Statham. Now? Yes, Jason Statham is like brutish looking. Yeah, but like, like he he's like like he his face looks like just like very um, harsh. Like he's right. not handsome, but I can I can I can see the appeal of why he's attractive. He's like but, bad boy handsome. Yeah, he's not like a, I don't know, I'm trying to think of a, a classically handsome Hollywood. I think of like a George Clooney type as sure, being sure. handsome. Like he wears a tuxedo. <laughs> he's not a Henry Cavill, you know? Right. Pierce he's Brosnan. Like, yeah, let's just keep saying good looking guys. Yeah. <laughs> just every James Bond. Uh, yeah. uh, um, Michael B. Jordan. Michael B. Jordan. Your Idris Elba's. Your yeah. Knuckles the Echidna's. Yes. I'm um, very excited about Sonic Johnny too. B. Good. Ladies Johnny... B. Shopping. <laughs> Salacious B. Crumb. <laughs> Johnny B. Good. Your parents are gonna love it. Yeah. Um, What are we talking about? You, um, you, did you have one last note? Oh, I said, what does everybody want? He wants oh, yeah, a car, yeah, 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 yeah. and most deaf wants to live in, like, a villa in like Spain. Like the south of Spain. And which Charlie is... just wants to, or no, Donald Sutherland tells him he needs to just settle down and find someone he loves or something. And then, of course... The Napster. The Napster. Wants 
And again, he Which, does the like geek speak he, thing. He kick. like says the part number and spec of the stereo before and by you know so that everybody gets to look at him and go um in English, please. <laughs> and can I say the reason that the reason that he goes by the Napster is because he insists that he, he invented actually Napster. invented Napster right. and that his roommate stole it from him. And the reason he called yeah. it Napster was because Seth Green, Seth Green was, was napping. napping. Yeah, which he is said fuck. it's because he has nappy hair, but no, he stole it from me because I was napping at my desk. Which is Fucking hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> really, really goofy. And like so stupid. Someone writing this in two thousand two or whatever was like, Yeah, this yeah, this that's fucking the, that's the sings. Stuff. <laughs> but it's he so wants dumb. the X nineteen whatever, blah blah blah, and they're all like, huh? And he goes, It's a speak it's a stereo. A speaker's so loud it blows a women's clothes off. Which what? <laughs> like presumably hang on. Bl- <laughs> Does it just blow women's clothes off? <laughs> Because I think it has if it's, a really specific frequency that hones in on things like bras. <laughs> yeah, like I think it's gonna blow everybody's clothes yeah. off, Lyle. Yeah, if it's if, that loud, if it has the power to do that, it's also probably doing damage to their bodies. <laughs> yeah, because like actually, plastic I think is stronger than flesh. Right. Like depending on like what what we're talking about. If it's here. blowing women's clothes off, it's also blowing its own speaker cover off. Yeah, like, and at the <laughs> very least is giving them tinnitus, like <laughs> lifelong tinnitus. Yeah. Like, and like he says it, and like at first, you know, when they're all just kind of like shooting the shit and being the, being boys, you know, locker yeah. room talk, it's kind of like, haha, nice. But then at the <laughs> very end, <laughs> it is to be believed that that actually happens. We, we and get the answer I have to that is, huh? <laughs> we get like a. 10 like 30 second long little credit sequence of each person buying what they got which handsome rob of course gets pulled over and asked in his aston martin but it's by like a a really like a porny lady cop and all he has to do is smile at her and she's like like, we're gonna have sex and And then then most deaf has a whole room just for his shoes just for his shoes and then yeah we get a little scene of seth green with like this hot chick really are the real napster and he's like, uh huh. Like, now will you just yeah, stand hey, in front? Favor- <laughs> just stand in front of these speakers, and then like the camera cuts away just to him, and he like turns on the speakers, and you hear he this turns kind of like, on the ah! the cover of Money by Pink Floyd just a little bit louder, diegetically speaking. Yeah, <laughs> and you hear kind of like 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 sort of being like this, like the woman being like, ah, what? Yeah, and then and he's he, just like, like smiling yeah. and laughing, which like it- at the very least, especially by like nowadays sensibility, that is fucking pervy and creepy and like yeah. a, a crime at the but, very least but, but then also just like, like how <laughs> yeah does it actually it seems like it actually works yeah that the stereo system <laughs> actually does blow women's clothes off and also he's not being affected at all by no. the sound even though it's so loud and he's yeah. not that far away you'd from think it you'd at least see like they they blow a little air hose on his hair to see it blow back or something yeah something so i like talk about like technology things that i go well no that's not how that works like i hate i hate that part because he's also <laughs> like of all the people he's the like the most likely his his senior superlative of this crew would be most likely to be an incel absolutely so like, so like he is being a fucking bad dude criminal asshole in that post credits moment and it's weird because it's, it's- it's definitely played for a laugh and it's yeah. and it's but it's confusing at best right because it is like wait i mean there's really certainly does? a lot of stuff in this movie that it's like painted like he says something um sort of in that kind of like trendy thing even still today with things like big bang theory of like nerds can be misogynist because they don't ever have a shot you know uh, yeah. And he does that a number of times, which, like, you can at least infer, like, oh, well, he's sort of a douchebag if that's the type of thing he says. But, like, no, he's, like, played to be so sympathetic. Yeah, it's very weird. Yeah. The movie's strange. Cancel also, the Napster from the, the Italian Napster. Job crew. This movie is weird, but also fun. It's a fun mm-hmm, movie. Mm-hmm. When I got done with it, I texted Mike. I was like, fun for the whole family. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, this is just such a feel-good, like, Charlie called it a feel-good heist flick. Right. Because she had seen it before, and she was like, oh, yeah, you're going to like it. Seth Green's in it. And I was like, Seth Green! 
I love seeing Seth Green in things. Yeah. I don't know why I love him so much. Yeah. Anytime. And also, I feel like in this one, he was actually trying. Like, when we watched Rat Race, I was like, this guy's fucking phoning it in for yeah. this one. Right. And so it was good to see him actually, God, like, you know, really race. giving it. God, Rat Race. Talk about, like, cancelable shit. <laughs> God, should be canceled. Full of it. Yeah, um, we gotta go to the break. <laughs> yeah, it's like time to finish the show right I now. Know. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a movie we're talking about just in the same way that Rat Race is. Like, there's so much fucking shit to talk about. There's so much. It's so goofy and weird. And it's, I don't know how Star Wars it is, but it's a very strange... It's such a product of its, of its time, too. It's right. like so 2003. Right. That's great. But we should go to the break. Yeah. <gasps> Woo! <Yahoo! laughs> And we're safe crack. Yeah. <laughs> and we're hack. By touch. Oh, yeah, hack. That's so much better. <laughs> yeah. Because the Matrix and because the Napster. And the Napster. <clears throat> we're back. I have the game this week. Uh, listeners, if this is your first time listening because you also loved the movie The Italian Job from 2003, welcome back to How Star Wars Is It, the mm-hmm. only podcast. And every episode, we play a little game. And it has to do with that week's topic. And this week, the game is called... Italian jobs, Italian jobs. <laughs> so good, good. You're gonna hear a thing. Oh no, I understand it already. I know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna hear me say a thing. If you think yeah. it is a translation into Italian of a job, mm. you which is an Italian job, <laughs> you have to take your best guess as to what that job is. Okay. Um, if you think it is a famous Italian person, you have to say that, and then you also have to take your best guess as to what it is they're famous for. Okay. And if you think it is something about Jobs, Steve Jobs, you have to say something along the lines of, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> because none of the Steve Jobs things in this are flattering. <laughs> Oh, good, good, good. Uh, Okay, so again, this is Italian jobs, Italian jobs. (laughs) Your first, your first one is... The commas, the commas are important. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Your first entry in this game is Andrea Amati. Now that's going to sound, that's going to sound to me like... An Ita- a famous Italian person. That's right. Yeah, I, I, I'm particularly hopeful that you will know the why this person is famous. You specifically. Me specifically? Oh no. Uh-huh. Um, they sound like a singer. You're in the ballpark. This is someone who lived in the 1500s. Oh. He laid the basis for what is now considered modern violin making. Ah, interesting. Yeah, he was cool. Like, I don't know if he was the first person. He he certainly wasn't the first person to make a stringed instrument, but he was the first person to make what we would now look at and say that's a violin. He was like, guys, hear me out. Yeah. Four strings. Yeah, right. And I, a bow. Uh, we worked for a long time, and it's it's uh, it, between phases right now. But uh, the um, the the what's this, the National Music Museum, which in fact is more more like a musical instrument museum and like history mm. of musical instruments um at the university of south dakota we were doing like the whole redesign for that and uh they have a bunch of amadi and like early you know 1500s uh violins and stringed instruments it's really cool um okay <clears throat> i said that i would make this quick and we've only been through one the next <laughs> one <laughs> biologo marino I'm going to say that's an Italian job. Uh-huh. Do you and have I'm a guess say, of what it is? Is that a marine biologist? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's an Italian job right there. <laughs> uh, okay. This next one is... Stole from his partner and co-founder of Apple, Steve Wozniak. When the pair first created the breakout game for Atari, they planned on splitting the pay 50-50. Although Atari, or excuse me, although Atari gave Jobs $5,000 for the game, Jobs told Wozniak that they got $700, leaving Wozniak to take home $350, while Jobs pocketed the other $4,650. Wow, that... Ah, jeez, what the fuck, man? <laughs> yes, that's a, correct. 
That is a Jobs uh, true fact. <laughs> the American hero, yeah. Steve Jobs, yeah. everybody. He has like a fucking like, holiday named after him in the state of California. Uh, all right. Next one is Antonio Stradivari. Oh, that's another, another violin maker. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That would be an Italian. Uh, he created <laughs> yeah, Italian. the Stradivarius, the Stradivarius, which of course is like the kind of modern standard. He was a pupil of a luthier. You know, that's a string mm-hmm. instrument maker. His, his teacher was Amadi's grandson. Crazy. It's all in the family. When you're here, you're family. Yeah. I mean, if you want to get, if you wanted to get, but if you want to get into violin making, you're like, God, you got to be bloodline to to a body or else fucking (laughs) forget about it. (laughs) Uh, Okay. Enrico Fermi. Oh, I know. This is, this is Italian as well. Uh huh. Of the Fermi, the Fermi paradox. Is that Uh, right? There is a, I think there is a Fermi paradox. I, I can't remember. He, he's exactly a, he's what it is, a, he but, was a, he was a, a physicist who yeah, worked on the Manhattan the Project. the first nuclear reactor. Yep. Yeah. I believe he worked on the Manhattan Project. I believe you're right. Yep. All right. This next one. Infermiera. That's going to be an Italian job. <laughs> is it someone, is it like a doctor? It's a nurse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Good job. I basically speak <clears throat> Italian. Yeah. Um, okay, next one. Had an illegitimate child, Lisa Brennan, when he was oh. 23, whose paternity he denied for years. Lisa's mother had to use welfare checks to raise her child. Eventually, he did accept Lisa as his legitimate child, and she changed her name to Lisa Brennan Jobs. <laughs> Yeesh, McGeesh, man. That's <laughs> fucking that rich. And you're Yeesh, your... McGeesh is correct. That is a fact about Steve Jobs. <laughs> oh, jeez, Louise. Uh, so far, you are batting a thousand. <laughs> yeah, I love this game. <laughs> um, okay, the next one is: In Apple's early days, he cut the company's philanthropic programs, saying they would return when the company was more profitable. Despite Apple's enormous success, the charitable programs were never reinstated. <laughs> of course they weren't. Of course they weren't. <laughs> wow. Yeesh McGeesh again. Yeah, actually, that one was a famous Italian. <laughs> oh, interesting. No, interesting, no, that was, you're right, Steve Jobs. Uh, okay, next one is Leonardo da Vinci. That's going to be Italian. Yes, that's correct. I, and he was inventor, writer. Yeah. Like, I'd say you know, he was a painter. renaissance man. I'd say so. <laughs> I, I, my, <laughs> like, I, I read the name of the person, Enrico Fermi, and then parentheses created the first nuclear reactor. And for this, I wrote Leonardo da Vinci, parentheses, Mona Lisa, etc. <laughs> yeah, you know, and the rest. <laughs> yeah, Mona Lisa and the rest. And the rest. Uh, early flying machine prototypes. <laughs> you know, the, you know, the guy. Yeah. Uh, okay, the next one is Medico. That's a doctor. That is a doctor. Italian job. <laughs> yeah. So, so far we have two violin makers and two people in healthcare. <laughs> yep. 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 Uh, okay. Next one. Cuoco. It's going to be famous Itali- Italian person, Kaylee Cuoco from the Big well, Bang Theory. Well, I will accept that in terms of Italian American heritage. Uh, it's also, I would have accepted that is the name of our parlor palm plant that we have. We named it Kaylee Cuoco because it just seemed right. But a Cuoco is a chef or cook. Oh, interesting. Oh, that makes sense. It's a good last name then. Yeah. Uh, Tim Cook. <gasps> Steve it Jobs. All, it all comes together. Uh, okay. Um, next one. He never put license plates on his silver Mercedes despite driving it constantly. How did he get away with it? California has a rule that a car owner has six months to put plates on a new car, and he just changed cars to the identical model every six months, allowing him to drive without plates. What? Like, why? What the fuck for, is wrong with you? For the aesthetic? Like, what yeah! the fuck? <laughs> Totally. What the fuck? That's so weird. Yeah, really weird. <clears throat> uh, that was Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs. Uh, next one. Antonio Meucci. I'm going to say it's a famous Italian. Yes. W- another violin maker. <laughs> you know, it's funny. This weirdly kind of has a tie-in to my, uh, my take on Steve Jobs in this whole, this whole game. Meucci is now considered by history 
the inventor of the telephone, even oh. though Alexander Graham Bell first patented it. But there's a, in fact, it's funny. We also, at the very same time I was working on the music museum project, I was also working on the Italian American museum project and they have mm. like a Meucci prototype phone. <laughs> very cool. Uh, this was a walk down memory lane of my job a year ago. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and last but not least, we have Idraulico. I'm going to say it's an Italian job. Uh-huh. I'll spell it. I-D-R-A-U-L-I-C-O. Some kind of, like, mechanic, maybe? You're in the ballpark. It's a plumber. Yeah, okay, Which, of course, nice. there is a very famous Idraulico. In fact, two of them. Yes. They're Mario. M the Mario Mario and Luigi Mario. Oh, I thought Sonic and Tails were plumbers. They, uh, well, they plumb the depths of my heart with their friendship Boy, yo, and yo, how yo, beautiful yo. it is. Um, that was Italian Jobs, Italian Jobs. <laughs> jobs. I learned a lot, yeah. which is always good coming out of a game. Gosh, we gotta wrap up. We do. Um, well, let's see. Have okay, we said anything we did, Star Wars? We, because we talked about the whole movie, we did manage to talk about Star Wars once or twice. The yeah. Chewie was on another transport. Um, did I send yeah. that to you guys today on Twitter? You did. You did. You did. <laughs> that, yeah. There was a guy on Twitter who said, by my count, there were at least seven fake out deaths in, uh, in The Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> yeah. So truly annoying. So um, if. If you like that movie, I'm jealous of you. I, I had this conversation with a guy the other day where I, I was he was like casting me in something, and uh -huh. I, he found out about my podcast, and I was telling him the premise, and he was like, so how do you feel about the sequels? And I was like, oh, no, this could go badly yeah, right. if you like the ones that I don't like. And Here's so I told what I him, think. They're a really good litmus test of fandom. <laughs> <laughs> I got like this is what I think. Yes, they're a good litmus test of whether or not you're going to be friends with somebody. Yeah. Uh, um, no, but he was actually very cool because I was like, I like the first one. Okay, I really like Last Jedi. I uh -huh. really don't like Rise of Skywalker. Uh -huh. And so we, I, I, he was like, Yeah, why? And I told him why, and, and like of what I could remember at least because I was like, I don't know, man. I don't want to talk about this right now. And then I didn't say that. I just told him right. normal what it was. And yeah. then he was super nice. He was like, I actually like them all. I think they're all pretty good. And I was like, You're very rare that's really <laughs> like, cool of you <laughs> i was like there's almost no one who has that opinion and he was like i know i feel like everybody either really likes one and doesn't like the other or or vice versa right. and i was like yeah that's i was like honestly i'm very jealous that you because, feel like, that way the central appeal of each movie is targeting like a different personality yeah and like, i mean one I, is like remember star wars and then another is like failure is our greatest teacher and uh, uh, I'm not gonna just give you more nostalgia for nostalgia's sake. And then the last one was like, I don't know. Here, <laughs> the last one, and then also that's why I feel like it's so hard for me to understand when people when people like last uh, Rise of the Skywalker. Rise of, I know, and Last it Jedi. Was a movie for nobody. <laughs> it's like you liked if you liked Last Jedi, it almost feels like you can't like Rise of Skywalker because Rise of Skywalker was like. Rise of Skywalker didn't like Last Jedi, right? So like, how how can you how can you watch all of them and be like, yeah, yeah like I liked all and of them. And to same. a degree, the Last Jedi kind of didn't like Force Awakens. Yeah, yeah. so it's like really it was like, hard. Yeah, forget about Snoke. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you this this interaction. It's really hard to like like all of them. I feel like because yeah. each one of them is in such contrast with the other. But I don't know. He was it's, a very nice was guy. Was this though, person so. someone who saw each movie when it came out, and that's the only time he's seen them? I I don't know. He seemed like a pretty big fan because he like had run Star Wars RPGs before oh, in the past. Okay, okay. I don't know. Um, anyway, it is but a cool okay. Guy. So yeah, there's there's the um, the tires is the chewy thing. <laughs> yes, but otherwise this movie does have like uh, like you said like it's it's not like a genius movie, but it does have some good like payoffs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This movie feels there's like the undoubtedly sneaking around. Definitely lots of sneaking around. There is a plot. There's not really a hero's journey necessarily. No. Um, There's um a couple of bangers. Yeah, that's <laughs> There's true. There's a cover of Money from Dark Side of the Moon. <laughs> that's very true. Um, that's, and that's kind of it. Yeah. Um, are there there's, any actors in common? Oh well, Seth Green and doing. Oh, Seth Green, Robot Chicken, and he's in. He's he plays a character in the um. And Bad some Batch and in the Clone Wars. I was gonna say he's. I know he's done voiceover for it. Yeah. So that counts. That counts. That counts. Surprisingly, um, not any of the other ones. I don't think. 
Handsome Rob has some Han Solo-y, Poe Dameron-y stuff yeah, going on. sure, um, sure, sure. There's a guy who you think is a good guy, but he turns out to be a bad guy. That's uh-huh. kind of a theme. There's um, some real, I mean, weirdly enough, Star Wars doesn't, Star Wars always has a team already put together, you know? Uh-huh, yes. There's not, or just like a... Well, a a trio. There's a trio, right? There's the and trio, so, but the trio all organically meets. Exactly. It's not like a te- it's not like we're getting a team together to pull off a specific job. It's like this trio came together because of happenstance and destiny yes, and now they're right. the most important people As in the universe. They're already on nickname basis with each yes, other. Yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. Like getting the team together for a, for a, a mission right. is not a very Star Wars thing. God, there's like um, no nicknames in Star Wars. No. I, I mean, say chew- that and chewy. I'm sure that's not true. Like Chewy. Um, yeah, right. That's well, and Snap biggest... Wexley in the sequels, I come to find out his actual first name is like Temin. Thanks, Lego <laughs> Star Wars game. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Lego Star Wars. Uh, so yeah, there's a handful of those. And of course, in yeah. Michael Delaney's games, uh, he has a couple that are like, uh, have nicknames that he created. <laughs> yes, which are always very good. Characters he created with nicknames he created. With nicknames as well. Um, yeah, I don't know. Let's let's give it a rating. because It has we're, a ride. Oh, at King's true, Island. <laughs> true. Very Star Wars. Um, there was oh, a the good and bad is fairly clearly delineated. Like the bad guy minions are all just like motorcyclers with helmets on. You can't see their face. Yeah. Yeah. Oscar from the office plays a rent a cop and Scott Adsit from 30 yeah. Rock plays an actor. <laughs> <laughs> that was such a strange, like Pretty small funny cameo. And weird. Yeah. So, so goofy. I love that. I think I think I'm gonna say for my unit of measure, hmm, it's gonna be not gold bars. That's too easy. Right. Plus Mine's anything gonna... under ten, that's what Steve bluffs as still having. But right, 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 right. We're right. only we're relegated to a ten point system here. Yeah, we are. I'm gonna say little earpieces that like little dangly earpieces uh-huh. that that they have to talk to each other with cuz i don't know unending why unending range <laughs> yes i don't know why those stood out to me cuz i was like they they should just be you shouldn't be able to see them right they should be so small in your ear that to but, me was one of the few things that did kind of feel realistic because like if you yes. had like a headset to plug into your just purchasable retail cellular phone <laughs> yes. it would dangle like that <laughs> yes which for some reason that stood out to me as being like I was like this is not stylish enough or something. Right. I was like the aesthetic of this is bad. It should just be in their ear without dangling. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Anyway, I don't know why that stood out to me. Um, I'm gonna do. Let's see. My unit of measure will be. Gosh, should it be plates of glass behind the door of a safe that mm. if cracked you can't get in it? Like what was to keep them from like. Using like an arc welder and just like cutting open the door. It's gold inside. It's not like it's not I like know. a paper checks. <laughs> I think that's the thing with with I think that's the, I think that's the thing with any safe, right? Is because like if you have enough time, sure, yeah, you true. you know that's the issue is that if 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 you're on a time crunch, that that's a helpful. That's true. That's a helpful yeah, stop. Yeah, that's a good point. I'm not going to do that, though, because I'm going to do a 2003 brand new hot off the, the line Mini Coopers. Yeah, baby. I think I know why. I'm going to do a red one. I'm going to do a blue one. And I'm going to do a white one because I'm going to give this movie our new two a three. Yeah, we've done three a lot recently. <laughs> our new default score. <laughs> I'm going to give it a three as well. <laughs> And three Mini Coopers is really good. So that's that's it, folks. It's a three. Go watch this movie. It's a, it's on HBO Max. Yeah, and it's, I would definitely uh, say fun. it's worth watching. Um, but certainly, it is a product of its time. It's, it's like it's, a dad. it's not like it's not like something that like is is problematic from start to finish. But it no, certainly has no, moments no. in it that I'm like, yikes, guys. <laughs> it's like a dad movie. It it's a movie totally that a dad, a dad will dad love. Yeah. You know, if you got a dad in your life, go watch it with yeah. with your dad. He'll freaking love it. Yeah. Um. Anyway, do you want us on the internet? Because if you do, you can find us at House Star Wars on Twitter and Instagram. Email us at a good podcast at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. Um, we are going to be t- two things. Actually, no, one thing. Sh- should we talk about the yeah. May the 4th thing? Yeah, we don't know precisely what our duties are, but we'll be there. Wait, where is it at again? I'm going to look it it's up. It's at Empirical. 
So is two, that, two. We're, we're what we're talking about right now is we have two live appearances. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is to say, Josiah and I will be in the same room in a public place twice in the next month or so. Uh, yes, correct. I can't remember now what date it is that you're hearing this that this is coming out, but. Last Saturday of April, I'm doing, uh, as we mentioned earlier this month on an episode with Bethany Remily, I'm doing both Baby Wants Candy shows that night at Second City, uh, an improvised musical. That's also a night when uh, she is in comedy sports shows at the same building, um, which is an improvised, you know, comedy show. It's, It's comedy played as a sport. And we think you should come see both shows uh, either hang out see my first one when it's like a full house or the second one when we're always struggling to fill the house because it's a late show. Um, so come be someone who fills that house because you went to the comedy sports show first. And yeah, hang out with Josiah and then we'll all fucking hang out at the bar or whatever. <laughs> yeah, it'll be great. Come to that. Or and then... we'll all say hi and then go home because by the time my second show is done, I'm going to be beat as hell and it'll be Mike... like 11 o'clock. Mike will be so tired and not <laughs> having fun at all. Yeah. Also, we're going to be hosting trivia and mm-hmm. maybe some other stuff at a Star Wars event on May the 4th. Yeah, at Empirical, at Empirical Brewery. Brewery. Brewery here in Chicago. So come out and join us. Angela's going to be there. Um, and she's who got us that gig. So come out yeah. and join us if you're in Chicago. It's the May coolest the fourth. place. It's got like Star Wars and other like nerd yeah. like action figure shit. It has a um, it has a Matrix Sentinel action figure hanging from Ooh, the ceiling somewhere, which I think very is cool. like sick. <laughs> so come out it's to that. Cool it's going to be a lot of fun. All their um, tap handles of their beers are lightsaber hilts, or at least they were at some point. I don't know. Hell if yeah, still dude. Are, but. That rules. And it's funny. Uh, you can always pick out which one's Yoda's. <laughs> Because <laughs> it's so much shorter than the others. You want to talk about the Patreon real quick? Yeah, we also have a Patreon if you want more of this. Uh, every week we do a bonus episode on there. Patreon.com slash how Star Wars is it? Um, it's $5 a month. Um, and then we also have now a back catalog of 11 feature length film commentaries of all the Star Wars movies. Mm-hmm. We, we watched them together and we talked during them. Um, so you can theory. you can watch it and listen to us talk or just listen to us talk uh, all of that is included at five dollars a month plus we have a discord where we chat with you guys sometimes um so yeah, yeah join us over time. there it it rules and and uh this month in lieu of another film commentary we're gonna do a special thing a we movie are for your ears <laughs> we're gonna do a little rpg of mm-hmm. sorts so this will be a good month to join up because uh Next month, you'll be getting something fresh and new off the press yeah. uh, that we haven't done before. So it's going to be fun. But uh, that's about it, right? Sandwiches of Star Wars. It's about time for mm-hmm. Bye-bye. Yeah, all those. So, like we always say, <laughs> we, we love, love you. you. And, and may, may the, the fourth, fourth be, be with, with you. you. Bye-bye. Bye. Where's my fucking truck? <laughs> Where's my fucking truck? That, oh, I wish they would have flipped it and gave... Skinny Pete the fuck. Because that would have been better. Motherfucking Ukrainians. Yeah. That would have been better.